Mic check, mic check, one, two, three into the foe. The Dantic philosophy and timeless wisdom at the dough. Come on now. Man, I got in the flow there for a second. I was in a different, I, was, I felt like I was in a different place. Got to uh, reorient to the daily Vedantic because for a second there, I almost went straight eight mile for everybody's benefit, but not as beneficial as the wisdom that I want to relay today. And this really is a relay because I was listening to an amazing philosopher, Sarva Priyananda, who has videos online. He's He's great, very, very legit. And there was something that he said that, uh, man, this was maybe weeks ago now, but it still sticks with me. And he said that the Vedantic philosophy, along with some forms of Tibetan Buddhism, the only philosophies that deal with the here and now and only the here and now. You don't have to reference or believe anything in the past that you weren't privy to. The acceptance of certain facts around a previous prophet or their words or a prophecy that also goes into the future. Nothing in the future needs to happen to make this philosophy any more valuable, real, or a knot that one can untie right now on your own, right here. The difference between this and nearly any other philosophy, you could say, is it just has no superstition whatsoever. And all philosophies that deal with the future deal in superstition. Any philosophical belief that is about some day in the future, some time, some judgment in the future is indistinguishable from superstition. That's a lot to sink in. Not only this broad stroke tying nearly all global major religions together with this thought of if it deals in the future, it's dealing in superstition. And of course, it's of the highest cosmic order of superstition. It's not black cat and your business might fail. It is if I do these things, then I'm going to reap some cosmic reward. The magnitude might be different, but the system is the same as the black cat. The difference within Vedanta is that you only need the here and now. Everything about this philosophy, everything about whether self-inquiry is the pursuit of the day, whether it is discernment from right and wrong action in this very moment between the perceived benefits of selfish motive and what we're told around the actual benefits of an unselfish or even better selfless motive how that generates energy here and now, not some cosmic event in the future, but here and now. When you do what you ought to do, what you know you ought to do, it unleashes energy within us. And you can experience that today. It might be some hard conversation you need to have. It might be some gym session you know you need to have. It might be just resting and not trying to accumulate and get more and more and more. 
and cultivate gratitude instead of cultivating greed in this here and now. And you can see, does that generate energy within me? Or the converse, pursue that greed. Just to see, does that actually dissipate my energy? Don't go to the gym. Don't rest and recuperate. Don't have that hard conversation. And then just put a timer down six hours later. Did that dissipate or generate energy within me? Three hours later. One hour later. Ten minutes after you make that decision. Or maybe it's self-inquiry of trying to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I really? Before your parents started making noises out of their mouths saying, William, Anushka, Sarah, Ajay. Before you started cultivating an identity of, I play this sport. I'm of this religious creed. Before all of that, a good prompt would be, who are you if you are in a sensory deprivation tank? Couldn't see anything, just floating in a sensory deprivation tank. And you had amnesia, where every 10 minutes you would forget anything about your past. But let's say I catch you in this current 10 minute window. And I say, who are you? What would you be able to say about yourself? Let's say you had amnesia where you didn't even remember your bodily form, no light, no perception whatsoever of any form. But you heard this question within you, who am I? This timeless, ancient philosophy points to that question. More so, it points to that answer. It's said in one of the Upanishads that the object that is being observed, by definition, cannot be the subject. You observe the sun, well, then it's whoever's observing it can't be the sun. You observe your hand. Well, we all know you could have your hand chopped off and you would still be there to observe. And this Upanishad goes up through the body, up the arm, to even the breath, then to the mind that you're observing. And it says you're not the hand, you're not the arm, you're not your breath, you're not your mind. Right now, just repeat some of the words that I'm saying in your head to yourself right now. Those words in that mind that is articulating those words within yourself, well, that can't be you. If you keep going, just through this self-inquiry right here, right now, no belief in any characters of the past, no belief in any superstition of the future. If you keep going with that inquiry, you get to who you really are. before we tend to then get lost back into the world. But that is the difference between this and nearly every major philosophy and religion around the world that coaxes us into some cosmic superstition about the future. With this philosophy, uniquely, all you need is the here and now. It helps to have a few guides, 
in that here and now. But there is nothing they will point to. Nothing within this tradition outside of you and the here and now. It really blew my mind when he said this. And it's been something that I've been reflecting on for a few weeks now and probably will for a few years. So if this speaks to you, maybe listen to this episode again, maybe in a few days, maybe in the here and now. But if this speaks to you, as they say in Vedanta, reflection is a hundred thousand times more powerful than listening. Maybe journal about it, discuss it with another seeker. You can even shoot us a note about it. But this is a powerful one. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. This has been another reflection on the daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time. Thank you.